So summer's here, the sun's in the sky, it's blazing hot, and that means one bait for me when it comes to commercial fisheries, and that is paste. Now, paste is not a complicated bait at all. In fact, it couldn't be simpler, and I'm gonna show you how to mix it, the rigs you need, the bait you need to go with it, and how to feed it and how to use it. So we're here at Makings to show you how to do it. Let's get going, shall we? So, we can't go paste fishing without the paste itself. And for me, one-to-one -one paste, absolutely brilliant, super simple to mix, it comes in several flavours, absolutely fantastic. Better still, comes with a free paste pot, I'll be using that later, I'll show you how to get the best from that. But first, let's show you how you mix it. You just need a little measuring tub, something like your pot off your cupping kit is absolutely perfect. It takes about 10 minutes to get ready this paste, so I like to mix, mix up as I go along almost, so I don't waste any. Just do small amounts and you won't go far wrong. So let's, first thing, unlike when you're mixing ground bait, I like to add the powder to the water and not the water to the powder like you would when you're mixing ground bait. So that's important. So first off, let's get a pot of water straight into our bowl and then exactly the same measure of the one-to-one -one paste. So let's get that in there. Just like that, get it in the water. Just mix, empty that out to make sure you've got, got it all in there. You don't want to waste any. And give it a swirl around. And at the minute, as you can see, it's absolutely soaking wet. You think you've ruined it, but trust me, it'll come round. It's loads of crushed pellets in there, loads of like fish meals and stuff, and they're taking a hell of a lot of water. And this will be ready in no time. In fact, look at this. We've got one that we prepared 10 minutes ago. And as you can see, you would not believe that that turns into that but it does in just 10 minutes. So that's the sort of consistency we're looking for. A nice soft putty, that's a great starting point. I'll show you how I mix the textures up later, but that is a great starting point for your paste. Another nice little tip when it comes to paste fishing, you know, it's really effective on hot days, hot, you know, sunny days. A little tub like that with a flip top lid is invaluable because it just allows you just to keep, the, you know, the wind off it, the sun off it, and just keeps it that nice soft texture. As far as feed is concerned when it comes to paste, I like heavy bait. Pellets and stuff are great, but for me, you cannot beat hemp and corn. Now, for me, hemp is the number one. It's oily, the carp love it, and it's heavy and it stays on the bottom. So we'll be using a few tins of that. Lovely hemp, just potting it in quite generously as well. Large pots of hemp, gets the fish on the bottom, gets some grubbing around, and I can present a nice big ball of paste over the top. The corn, Again, another heavy bait that fish love, visual, stays on the bottom, but I actually use it a little bit differently. I'll be potting this in, the hemp, and then actually throwing corn over the top. Now, as we all know on these fisheries, the fish are so used to hard pellets going in that I may want at some point to use some noise to attract some carp into my peg, and that's where this beauty comes in. I just throw a few grains over the float and just keep ringing that dinner bell, and then as soon as I start seeing some liners and stuff on my float, cut it out, Go back to feeding the hemp and hopefully we'll keep catching some carp. So as you can see, super simple. One-to-one -one paste is so easy to mix up. That'll be ready in 10 minutes. I think we should have a look at my rigs and then catch some carp. The brilliant thing about paste fishing is there's no need for complicated rigs at all. All I've literally got is some line, a hook, and a float. It cannot get any simpler than that. I've got no shot on my line at all. Just, it cannot get any easier. We'll start at the hook end. We've got a size 10 XSH hook on there. Super, super strong. If I can get away with using a 10, the fishery rules allow, then I'll use a 10. If not, a 12 is absolutely fine, but you just want something with a wide gape and nice and strong. Um, and these fit the bill perfectly, to be honest. One little thing I do do, and it's something I picked up from Andy Finlay, is leave a tag end. When I tie the, tie the hook, I just bite it off and leave probably, I don't know, it's probably six or seven mil of tag there. And it's just something else for the paste to grip onto when you're using a wetter paste. Might just only mean that the paste stays on there for a few more seconds, but every little helps. So, all we've, like I say, we've got no shot on the rig whatsoever. We've just got 020 AccuPower there, and we're up to, a paste float, one of the Preston paste floats, and it's the number two version, the larger one. And as you can see, it's a bit unique. It's got an eye at the top of the bristle, 
one at the base of the bristle where you normally where you normally see it and then you've got three rubbers down the down the stem the reason for this we don't want it to tangle when we're tipping out we're, we're using the pot that we got free in the paste and having the uh, line come out the top like that just stops it tangling the, the float is self cocking and i use the weight of the paste to cut cock the float that way when the paste does come off it's even knocked off or a fish knocks it off or whatever like that the float will pop up a little bit and i'll know that my bait's off so i can just ship in and re repeat the process but that is literally it. it it cannot get simpler than that there's no no need for any shot or anything like that. the weight of the paste is such that it'll cut the float and like i say as soon as the bait comes off the float will pop up and tell you so that is it super super simple i'm going to show you now how how and where i'm plumbed up in my peg and where i've chosen to fish Right, so as we said before, we're on Lake Two here at Makins, which is a big, open sort of style lake. There's loads of space and it's quite deep. So for that reason, I've actually chosen two areas in my swim to fish. First one is at five meters. I've had a real good plumb around and at five meters, there's a lovely gradual slope and the bottom is rock hard. So it's a nice place to fish with paste. Uh, it's not too far out because as we all know, you do miss a few bites and you do need to be in and out a little bit. So fishing at five meters just allows me to be nice and efficient. If I do miss a bite, it's only going to take me a few seconds to get back in there. The second spot, I'll just roll that in there. Hopefully we'll catch one while we're waiting. The second spot I've plumbed up is right down the edge, just to the platform to my right. The wind's blowing in, and I should imagine later in the session, I'm going to catch a couple of big fish down there, to be honest. It's about three foot deep. It's not, I'm not, I'm not too concerned about finding really shallow water when I'm fishing for these great big fish especially with a big bait like paste and the three foot I found and a lovely flat area just in front of that platform looks like the perfect spot to me. But I'm not fed that yet or anything like that. I'm gonna just leave that alone and I'm just gonna concentrate on this five meter spot. Now all I've done to kick off the session today, I've just put in like a good handful of hemp and a bit of corn and then I've just gone straight in with that and then gone in with my paste hook bait and I've actually caught a massive common carp straight away well into double figures first chuck and it just proves how effective pace can be you know a lot of people nowadays start on these commercials with pellets and baits like that and you might catch some smaller carp but with a big lump of pace if there's a great big carp there you're going to catch him and today is proving it with that great big hippo of a thing um i've had another couple of carp as well since it's not hectic by any means but those few fish you know i've got well over 30 pound already with just a few fish so it just, you know, it just shows you that starting close in with a big bait like Pace can really get your session off to a great start. So we've been through the baits, the rigs, the tackle that we need. Might as well look at how we hook, go about hooking the paste because it's um, it's very simple, but there's a few little things that we need to get right. So the first thing is have a bowl of water next to your paste. It's easy to make the paste with wet fingers. So first thing I do, just dip my fingers in there and get myself a wet hand. Take off a piece of paste. Be quite generous. You want a decent piece. You know that's well, it's a big old big old lump. The big fish in here, they want a good mouthful. So we've got a, we just flatten it off with my fingers, and then I lay the hook to the base of the flattened off area like that and just make the paste up just like that don't need to do it too perfect a nice rough lump one final wet of the fingers and i just just dampen it and then we've got our paste pot that came free with the paste so what we're going to do we're just going to slide it in there and that will help us transport it to the swim as you can see i've already got my top kit on my pole great tip that because it just allows you to, one, as soon as you've got, you know, you're baited up, you can just ship out there nice and smoothly and drop it in. As I mentioned when I was talking about with the rig, I've got no shot on the line, so that how we actually present the rig is quite important. So let me just show you how I go about that. So first thing, lower your tip towards the water and ship the float out along the, along the water. That will just stop any annoying wrap over tangles. And I just go upwind, which today is left. I lay the rig out. 
So as you can imagine, it's in a big old circle and I just bring the pot over to where I want to fish, drop the paste in like that and then pull the float over the top of where that ball of paste gone in. And then just let, you just got to wait then for the bait to settle, hit the bottom. The float will just stay on the top like that and then all of a sudden it'll just pop up like that. And there we go, perfectly presented, waiting for our next bite. It's very, very simple, but you just need, a, there's a couple of processes that'll just stop you getting in any tangles because sometimes a paste float can actually wrap over when you're shipping it out. But doing it this way just keeps those sort of tangles to a minimum. And it's worth talking about paste bites while we're here and fishing, waiting for the next bite. You're gonna miss bites with paste fishing. It's just, it's just the nature of the beast, unfortunately. If you can imagine you've got a heavy weight anchor in your rigging position, and it's like a bowstring, so anything that touches that line will register positively on the float. So it might even be a roach or a skimmer hitting your line and it'll just absolutely bury. So you've got to just take that into account. A proper pace bite you will rarely miss. And what you're looking for, any slow movements or little lifts and little dips don't really interest me. I won't even strike, I'll just wait for it to pop back up. What you're looking for is a really, really fast, sharp under. You know, we've got plenty of bristles showing and we're waiting for that. A little, you'll probably just get a little lift like that and it should just absolutely whack under and that is a carp bite and, they, and they'll normally be hooked nice and in the top lip with that big size 10 smack in the top lip. The float absolutely flew under there. And we've got a nice fish. Feels good. We're only using 13 Ola today. I quite like using the softer elastic when I'm pace fishing. You tend to strike quite hard and stuff like that and you're hooking big fish on a short pole. A nice soft 13 Ola just allows them to sort of swim out and with a roller puller we can soon get them under control. Even on deep sort of lake like this. Just take your time though because they are going to be big fish on pace so we want to make sure we get them in. So he's using an 020 and a size 10 so the gear's plenty strong enough. Oh yes, nice pace fish. Yes! Got him. Lovely. There we go. Nice fish. I don't know, probably six or seven pound there on the... Taking on the paste. Beautiful. Let's get him in, get him unhooked. But like I say, just look out for those bites. You want a really fast, positive under, one of them that makes you sort of jump off your box. Have a strike at one of them, and they're the ones you're gonna hit. Well, we've had a brilliant day here at Makings, and I thought I'd fi finish the session down that edge, and I've looked an absolute berserker of a carp here. Don't know where it's going, it's going all the way up the lake. Elastic everywhere. We're fishing 020 and a 10 though, so hopefully we'll see him. But he feels very, very large, that is for sure. We'll just take our time. This is the beauty of pace fishing though. You know, you, you've got to encounter some large specimens throughout the day at some point, especially on a venue like this where there's plenty of them. Just take your time. Worth breaking down some sections as well because you never know when a big fish will charge and you might need to add them on again. So here he comes. Oh, he's a great big common. Oh, we've got him, look at that. Awesome, big margin edge dweller on the paste. Oh, look at that, that's gotta be. Well, I don't, I don't even like to guess. Double figures, certainly. Shall we see if we can get him up? Size 10 nestled in his chops. Look at that thing. And that is why we come pace fishing. Big fish like this, strong tackle, simple bait, and most importantly, deadly effective. Hope you've enjoyed that. We're gonna put him back, and I might just have one more chuck.